Welcome to the first annual Tasties, brought to you by Was That In Good Taste? And now, your host, your MC, Chandler Phillips. Thank you so much, everyone. And we have a great show for you tonight. With us is our uh, announcer and orchestra, no, our, what is it? And the conductor of our orchestra for the evening, James Beery. The stars are out tonight, the awards are flying, and everyone is on the edge of their seats for the most pivotal award show of the century. This is a big night. If you are a spirits enthusiast, make sure that you tune in. But of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's important. And without further ado, actually, we do we want a little ado. We, 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 a little ado about what? Uh, much ado about nothing. <laughs> Welcome to the first ever Tasties, where we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to have an awards ceremony for the top cocktails, spirits, cordials, and cocktail makers. And it's a night of surprises, night of a lot of glam. James, who are you wearing? Well, right now I'm wearing um, uh, 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 Old Navy from eight years ago. Uh, Vintage. 45 year old ties. Three 45 year old ties. That's... No, 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 no. This tie's like six years old from. Uh... But collectively, you yeah. could get anywhere close to 100 years worth of ties. That's quite a lot of ties. Listen. That's a lot of years. We're about ties. prestige here. Okay. This is a prestigious program. This is probably the most prestigious cocktail awards event that we've seen. This is the only one I know of. And <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's the, uh, you want to pop it? Oh, did that. we have here. Yeah. What do we got? A uh, Cord New Classico. It's Two for fifteen dollars. Oh, that sounds delicious. Nice, high quality here, right? I think we'll give it to your host, Chandler. Oh, why? Thank you yeah, so we're much. Gonna, we're gonna give you a. Is this a? It's a. Yes, pointed at my face. It's a Matode Tradition out. It doesn't actually. Oh, it's a Kava. It's a. Ca I was looking. I was trying to see if. It, I haven't even taken the wiring off yet. Uh, that remember that football player lost his eye. No, which okay, yeah, I know the basketball player. Oh, because of that, like because of 2020. So it's a good thing. Oh, I know so that. I would say that direction, I guess. Oh, you're gonna do it that way. That's no yeah. fun. That huh. you were gonna shoot it. Just shoot it that way. Well, because usually if you shoot it, it then. Woof. Nah, that's some pop. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So we have here our celebratory cocktail. We have here a uh, a. What would you call this? It's a twist on a French 75. It's a Hibiscus Hollywood 75, but we'll actually say it's a Hibiscus Hollywood 96. It has to go to the top. What? Did you do? It's going to... Oh, almost, just almost, because it has to be about three ounces. There you go. Oh, okay. Because that... Because... Right. Wow, wow. Wow, look at this. The, the Hibiscus Hollywood. Or we'll call it an Italian job. Ooh, I like that. Um, we chose to substitute hibiscus for lemon because it doesn't really do the job of lemon, but it looks pretty doing it. And also, we substituted champagne <laughs> for uh, kava. Kava. Um, do you know what the difference between kava and champagne is? It's not made in champagne. Well, that. But kava is the Spanish version of a sparkling wine. It's like Italian has prosecco. French Ooh, has. Look at that. That is Hollywood, baby. That is glitz and glam. It's glitz with and... Jean-Claude Van Damme. So what's interesting, we've been wanting to do a French 75 on the pod for a long, long time. Wait, we Actually. cheers and we didn't sit. Oh, we yeah, did, we didn't. We cheers. Bad luck. I'm sorry. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That is tasty. We have. Wow. Okay. That actually did something. I thought the hibiscus was not going to be tart enough to blend well with the the other flavors going on. Because a traditional French 75, as you know, is... Uh, I don't know if you know. Is lemon juice, gin, simple syrup, topped with champagne. And we cut a few corners, but we did include the gin. We did include the simple syrup. We substituted hibiscus and kava for the other two ingredients. And I think we might be cooking with something here. 
we always talk about this, and I'm always going on about when you see cocktails and recipes for cocktails, you probably don't have enough money to waste on champagne. That's true. Right? You can always bend and twist a cocktail to make it suit you, to be as fun as you like it. That's kind of the whole fun. Well, and I think also in the tradition of cinema, basically retelling stories in formats that are recognizable, but with new little twists in order to give us that much more enjoyment and personal satisfaction from the new stories being produced. I'll say this. This is an unannounced award going to the cocktail that we've been putting off having for the longest amount of time. The most put it off <laughs> cocktail. Because we've been talking about having some variation of our French 75 for how long now? Over two years. At least. Yeah. So it's exciting. It's delicious. It's refreshing. It's been in production for a while, and it's about time audiences got to view it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And it is a delight. Before we get into awards, though, because, boy, do we have a collection of awards. Let's just talk a little bit about awards shows. This was my, okay, this was my caveat a little bit for, for doing an award show. I think it's not ethical to have a real award show. Award shows are ridiculous. The points are made up, right? They're all like. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. They're, they're, they're mostly social. I'm not talking about you got an award at your job. I mean like the Oscars and the Grammys. These big award shows going on, I think, to be honest, is like, it's ridiculous when people are starving on the street and people are dying en masse overseas with our tax dollars. So it's really weird and vapid and empty to be fucking holding award shows, wearing pins and stuff, not like you know it's not like it's like not even, it's kind of a self-aggrandizing event, but to an extent that like so much is is about it that um and it's a lot of virtue signaling it's, too. It's so much virtue signaling. That's the big problem. Like you can it's not even like a you know, people pretend that they're just going about a day and just doing something, right? They just pretend that they're like, uh, they're going to the movies, right? You go to the movies, you know? But if you go to the movies, you don't put on a Palestinian pin because you know there's going to be paparazzi there, right? You know, you go to enjoy it or to participate in the thing. But is it vapid because they're virtue signaling? Or is this like literally the least they can do? To show some support in some way. Like, it is it is the least, but it is something. The problem, I think, so virtual signaling is not bad. Uh, we spoke about this before. It's it's complicated, right? You know, we all do virtual signaling, that's, right? That's when, just how signaling works. Yeah. That's how you communicate without extensive communication. I'm doing that of, now. Yeah. I'm making it clear my opinions and my, my, my thoughts because, you know, you're not going to know unless I tell you, right? You know? But the problem is that usually in award shows, the ones that you see on television are produced by, <clears throat> attended by, and are covered by big, big platforms, right? Mm -hmm. And these people often aren't using that power outside of their pen. Which, but I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying boo them. But I'm, you know, that, like two people and Mark Ruffalo being like, yeah, they sh they shut down a a block where the Oscars are, and now people have to go in the main entrance. You know what I mean? It's not really doing anything, but I'm not against it. I just think that award shows are mostly, it's like, it's like whose line is it anyway? It's, yeah. It, <laughs> I, I do feel like award shows do kind of showcase how head up your own ass you are mm -hmm. when you're an artist in general. Because uh, there, there's the... It's not just that it's a prestigious event, but it's an advertised prestige. It's like they have to convince you as the viewer that this is important. And it's not just like you're going to be like, oh, I like movies. I want to see who in the movie industry is doing the best. It's almost like it's kind of being shoved down your throat that this is an important event. It's the stars are out and it is the red carpet and everyone is a who's who of who isn't. You know, it's interesting what you just said. I think that applies to the artists, too, because part of it is convincing the music artist, the actor, the podcaster, whatever the event is, it's about also convincing them that it's important. Yeah. Right, you know? And it's not inherently evil to have an award show. In fact, most most career occupations have some degree of But they're not awards. really usually on TV. Usually. You know? 
And also, I think that one of the big issues is that like these awards, nobody who matters ever gets the award they deserve. So who cares? Except for our award show. Well, I do kind of think now. This is the, if we have this class of entertainers, in order to make sure that entertainers are actually compensated for the amount of work that goes into entertainment, then the academies would put the technical awards on TV, which are just as important, if not more important. That is than, true. Right? It's because they, you know, they don't present. If they were like, hey, the second grip, AD, the AD and the second grip of Lord of the Rings. If right? they had those, away, and they do kind of give like those big sweeping, like the special effects crew, the makeup design crew, like the crews will get awards, but usually those are the ones that they're like, as they're going to commercial, Excuse me. Oh, yeah, just throw it on there. As you're going to commercial, it's like, like, oh, it's like Lord the of the Rings wins the top tech. Lord of the Rings wins the top makeup. And it's like as you're going to commercial or it happens during the commercial. Yeah. And it's just kind of like those are the people who are putting in hours. 100%. And aren't getting the compensation. It's almost like then you need to have just the awards focus around the actors and the, the, like, the more artsy part of... But it's all art. It is all art. And that's the, you, you're going to tell me I'm not, there's not more. I'm not saying you. Yeah. But there's not more art in doing acting than there can be in being the second AD. It's because they have the people who are professional at being on screen on screen the most. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's interesting because talking about this. Okay. My opinion about award shows is not going to rapidly change. My opinion, to be clear is I I like them sometimes. I used Me to and my girlfriend, we used to go. We used to go to like a bar we would watch. You know what I mean? If I see, I watch some of the content sometimes. It's just, you know, I think that a good example is Taylor Swift going on stage and like doing a thing to like secretly announce an album that just came out mm-hmm. or is about to come out. And that's cool and stuff. You know what I Wait, mean? Did she do that at the Grammys or at the Oscars? I think that was at the. What just happened? The, the Oscars, Oscars at the Grammys. She did at the Grammys. Okay. She did that at the Grammys. Now, that's cool, and I like that. But if you're, if you matter and the things you care about matter, and you're, if you are given five minutes to not curse but talk about whatever you would want, I would hope. That it wouldn't be to pimp your album. I would hope that it would be. I'm not saying you got to talk about wait, Palestine. Wait, awards shows actually have nothing to do with the recipients of the awards. Awards shows are for the marketing and PR teams of the clients. Mm-hmm. That's all it's for. That the award shows have nothing to do with Taste performances. Award shows are entirely for the. Um, for the the market for the the gravitas um and and credits it's the accreditation of public relations publicity and marketing teams it is you're, and that ding 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 you are fucking correct because okay it's not about the actors Mm-mm. it's not about the grips and the gaffers it's not about the sec it's not about the ad and and the guy who's in the rig on like team c who's getting like just panning shots it's not about that it's for the producers it's literally and for the about managers. making them more money so yeah. that you go oh because you see it and you're like oh yeah people are like oh yeah well if you win the oscars you will end up on tv more maybe right you would mm-hmm. end up if you get an Oscar, you get more roles. But but who's winning if you get more roles? Who's really winning? Your agents? It's like, ah, you don't see this. I actually do because I follow and I still receive these, like, I love marketing materials. I love it, right? So I follow marketers. I get the marketing materials sent to me 100%. When the Grammys happen, when the Oscars happen, I my spam is full mm-hmm. of, like, the big companies they send out these big press releases like, ah, we have done this and these are the stars that we have. Don't you also get, um, I don't know if you get this or if another friend I was talking to, where they'll send you the actual like reels of movies that may not have come out yet, but they're se- they send them out 
to um, not even people of the academy, but like if you're academy adjacent, you can give feedback on. Potential. I literally am a nobody, and I have gotten films before, and I'm no one. I've never got because I'm not part of the academy. Yeah, but you absolutely can get screeners without being is. part of the academy. Mm -hmm. Generally, it tends to be for the smallest fucking films. If they think that you're social media adjacent or anything like that, they'll send it to you so you can watch it because they want you to talk about it. But that's not anything big ever. That's kind of cool though. Like that's yeah. that's a fun little. I like, do have one friend who I have. I have one friend who won an Academy Award. It's a whole thing because. We met on a bus and we hung out the two times and they wanted to date. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But they get screeners and I used to go to their house. Well, they got an Academy Award. You know, they send you a laptop, some of these companies. Mm -hmm. And it's like fucking incredible. You got to sign in with the password they give you. Oh, it's like real yeah. deals. Yeah. Or they also have like some of the companies have a portal and they'll send you the movie through the portal. Oh. And it like self-destructs. It's like a whole thing because they want to make sure that people, <laughs> you know. And can you imagine like getting a, the, whatever, the whole like spool of <laughs> film and they're like now after you watch this it will burn itself chandler they're phillips like, the mission if you choose to accept it is to watch this taylor swift d d comp, uh, what, concert movie do i choose to accept it or do i just keep the explosives that being said though i want to turn this and i like this and we were talking about this before mm -hmm. i'm, I'm gonna include you in it because i think this is the kind of thing that people like <laughs> you were there for it yeah i uh I would love to turn this into a real thing. And it's like a few things I want to do, right? This I would is love to only the first end. It's the first one. Yeah. I would love to do this again next year. And I would love to raise money. Because I think that the best things about doing award shows is being able to use your platform. To use the platform like a young Marlon Brando. I fucking love that. Because Here's the thing. People are like, oh, people will be like, oh, I can't believe that you want somebody to get on top of Palestine. That's actually something that's been happening forever. And it's like the last 25 years. It's I would vanished. love to hear someone be like, keep politics out of my entertainment. <laughs> when like everything that's made has some political agenda or there's like art is political. I mean, every Everything is political. Everything. There's politics. literally not a single thing on the earth. Um, this kava was probably made, unfortunately, by somebody who might be not be paying, get paid enough, right? It's That's what true. happens. This cheap glassware that I got from the dollar store is obviously made by somebody who doesn't get paid enough because how else do you get glassware for less than a dollar? Hmm. How else do you get glassware that's made by hand for less than a dollar? Because you cannot make this simply by a machine. You'd have to have somebody touch it. Every piece of clothing, there's no automatic stitching. There there's is. patterns. No, no. Every piece of clothing, every piece of clothing, one dollar, a hundred dollars, five dollars, oh, has a person. That's the problem with fast fashion, isn't and it? That, that is because oh. you you buy a knitted sweater. There's no machine that knits. So if you're buying a knitted sweater for less than a hundred dollars, if you're buying one for forty dollars, somebody's oh. getting paid less than a penny for that because it requires lots of labor. That's true. Everything's politics. Everything is politics, and it's cool to not saturate the things you're doing in politics. It's cool to not saturate everything you're doing. It doesn't have to be saturated, you know, but, but it, it's, it but it's there. Have to have reminiscent, <laughs> but it's there. You can have echoes of politics through your work, kind of like a political through line. I mean, there's a thing I. Uh, where whenever I talk about politics, I don't really spend a lot of time actually harping the politics. I think about it a lot, but I don't. What I do is, is I try to make sure it's clear. There should be an, it's one ounce. Oh, okay. There should be was, enough in there, hopefully it. for two. I just don't know. We'll see. Um, but when it comes to like politics and things like that, I try not to spend my entire life just like a fucking annoying people. But when you're having conversations about things, your politics become evident because everything's political. The food you eat, the clothes you wear, the shows you watch. So when you watch this, I want you to enjoy it. I want you to have lots of fucking fun. But remember that we're just here with you. We're people, we're individuals, and all individuals have fucking politics. But more than that, we're artists. We're artists. We're artists who are making art. And if you'd like to see more of this art, like we said before, like, comment, and subscribe. 
interact with us. If you feel like we have snubbed any sort of cocktail uh, spirit, etc., let us know. Because you know what? We might include them or not just include them, but like we could try to... Awards don't have to be timely, as we are finding out. Awards can be bought. We can be bought. <laughs> Everything is up for grabs. There one, of, one of my favorite things about uh, awards, because you said like it can be bought, I love that shit so much. Just buy an award. Just buy one. Just do it. Send us money, you know and what? we will say that your drink of choice wins an award. It's that simple, but it's not that simple. No, but it is. But it is that simple. No, but it is that simple. Hi there. You won an award? We got you. All you gotta do is leave a comment below or send me a DM, and we will send you an award of your choice. To be clear, I will go, I will order you an award at retail. Well, it has to be it has to be cocktail related. Yeah, it has to be cocktail related. Yeah. We're not just like giving awards for like whatever you want, every any cocktail. We're not giving like, you know, best coach awards because yeah, no. We're, I will personally Spend retail, and I'm going to charge you retail plus a little bit of convenience, mm -hmm. right? hours, and 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 shipping, right? It'll probably be like $6 of convenience plus the shipping. We just start a new business. And then you <laughs> can have any award for any cocktail you want. We're just we're just brokers for a trophy shop at this point. Fuck. I'm not against it. <laughs> you know, also, oh, make sure that you uh, go to TikTok. You know why? Because we have stickers on TikTok. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. that's real cool. Right. So, are you ready? Without further ado, and boy, did we have some ado. And now it's time for your award categories. Up uh, first for the tasties, we have the nominees for best glassware design. The nominees are Margarita glass. Rocks glass for their work in old fashioned and whiskey on the rocks. We have Collins glass for their work in a tall drink that has ice in it. <laughs> we have a highball glass for their work in doing essentially the same thing. And rounding out the categories, we have a coupe glass, and last but not least, the shot glass. And your winner for glassware design of 2023, Coupe gets the award. Accepting on behalf of the coupe glass will be James Berry. <sighs> I absolutely am so proud to be up here accepting this award for the coupe glass. I will say this, it's spelled C-O-U-P, in case you can't Google it. It is a small glass. It tends to be about between three to five ounces, and it is absolutely awesome. For cocktails featured on Was It In Good Taste Like The Pink Lady. The, wait, what's the, Corpse Reviver. And many others. If you have a short drink, or a, oh, what do you call it again? <laughs> Just like a shaken, uh, like oh, a, or a fizz? A fizz, yes. If you have a cocktail with a fizz, a coupe glass is for you. you oh, wanna, man. You want to know a little fun fact about coupe glasses? Please do. They're originally modeled after uh, Marie Antoinette's bosom. Because there was a whole thing, that, like, or one of the legends is... Um, the lore, I guess, about it is uh, they wanted champagne glasses. And the best way to drink champagne is actually not in a flute. So uh, you it, it condenses, it kind of restricts the bubbles. And so a coupe glass, the one that's a little bit more like a dish, um, is actually better so that you can experience the aromas being released by the effervescence. And uh, Marie Antoinette was so like, let them eat cake, let them drink champagne, that she wanted people enjoying champagne at the Palace of Versailles to be drinking it from her bosom, symbolically. It's always interesting because I've always thought, so there's a little bit of connection to history here. 
Was because it? tea saucers weren't the thing you put under the teacup. What? No. That wide, flat saucer you would sip the tea from. What am I, a cat? What am I, some sort of little kitty cat just licking, <laughs> licking tea from a saucer? The, the kind of wide surface area allows for the bubbles to pop. They, they, they tingle your nose a little bit. I do like right? nose tingle. Um, it's also a little stouter. Right, it's yeah. not as deep, mm -hmm. right? You know, so I feel like the effervescence uh, lasts a little longer, but also the drink is shorter, which means you drink it before it it all goes flat. In a flute, all of the bubbles are released in the immediate pour; they're all shoved to the top, and then you get like a big old head of foam on top. By the mm -hmm. end, you got flat champagne. Nobody wants that. That's I love that you said that. The the bubbles, the effervescence that you see, looks fun. But it's not good for the champagne. You just don't want it to be flat. Is um, it time for the next category? I think it's time for the next category. Would you like to read it? Or presenting the next category, James Berry. <clears throat> so we have the next category is garnishing and presentation. Oh, I'm really excited for this. <laughs> I don't know if you know about this. When I was a kid, I used to garnish a lot and do a lot of presentation myself. <laughs> I believe you got your start, actually, in the uh, Garnishers Guild. <laughs> the uh, nominations are... <clears throat> Ooh, these are some good... Okay, man. Preserved cherries. That's a good one. Orange slice. Like a, as in a blue moon type deal. Citrus peel. Ooh, this is a this is a stacked category, brulee banana medallion. Brulee banana medallion is a newcomer to the uh, to the field. Let's see how that goes out for him. Hard candy, lollipop, one of our personal favorites as of late. Peach gummy rings. What a flashback! Mm -hmm. Pulling back into the past. It looks like it's not just the past year that gets you going. And slapped mint leaves. Oh, well, this is actually a pretty stat category, so let's see who the winner is. You're not going to believe it. <gasps> slapped Mint Leaves. Ooh, it's a big win for Slapped Mint Leaves. They have been hankering for this category when ever since they grew from the mint plant. Wow, that's wild. Slapped Mint Leaves. Okay, we got to talk about Slapped slap Mint Leaves. They Ooh. seem... Like a, like a really small, small, they seem all the way to the side. They seem so common, but they deserve this. So I want everybody to give Slap Mint Leaves. It's really about their dedication. It's their dedication to the art form. They put themselves through so much, the trials and tribulations, you know, they find themselves in some drinks, they negate themselves from others, and it's just, it's about time that they found their niche. Some of the well-known cocktails, of course, that you can find slapped mint leaves in, of course, like a uh, oh my brain. <laughs> a mojito, a mojito, or a <laughs> Moscow Mule, or or actually, to be honest, pretty much anything. A mint julep. The the versatility of the mint leaf allows you because it has a slight savory flavor as well as the mint profile that you all like and love. You can put it inside of anything. You ever had a screwdriver with some mint? Okay, of of the things you could have said, mint and orange juice, I feel like or it, that's like the one. That's the one. You know what's really funny? I said that and I looked right at you too because I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> are are you serious? Yeah, I, yeah, I did because I think that like anything is a gin and tonic. You put that's one like inside. if you put Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt in a movie <laughs> together. What? If you put uh, if you put uh, some mint and also here's the thing, muddled mint different. You take the mint. You slap it, right? It breaks it up, right? You know, it breaks it up. It allows it to release the aroma and the flavor, but not too much. It doesn't get too bitter. Mm -hmm. Take that, put that in a gin and tonic. Ooh. Take that and yeah. put that in pretty much anything that's nice, it's simple, it's clear, something with soda. Even if you want a non-alcoholic beverage, take some mint, put it inside of your seltzer water, garnish with a twist of orange or some lime, and you have yourself something delicious. Mint oils is also great for uh, digestive health, so that that also adds to that. That's that's also a part of it. Love, I love. You know, it's as interesting. I was looking at the supermarket earlier, and I saw some mint, and I thought, ah, 
it's just gotten so expensive. It has. But when mint is around, mint makes its way into anything. Here's the thing, though. Mint is one of the most tenacious herbal plants that you can grow in a home garden. Whenever I grow mint, honestly, I have a hard time keeping a handle of it. Mm -hmm. it. It grows out of control. It is the, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, it, it's it's just it takes over. It just spreads. It's proliferous. It's it's, it's a weed. It's almost a weed, effectively. Yeah. It'll take over anything. It'll sap the nutrients and everything. And if you have anything next to it, I would advise not to because it will absolutely take it over and smother it. Mm -hmm. So with then, that said, it's very easily uh, easily maintained and great to have on hand for any sort of bar um, collection. It looks like we're going to be going back to growing mint this summer. It's going to be a mint spring. Are you ready for summer. the next ca category? Oh, I'm so juiced for, this <clears> next, <throat> for the next category. The next category presented by Chandler Phillips. The category is visual effects. Your nominees are Blue Curacao for their work in turning drinks very blue. Nominee number two, green food coloring featured on one of our most recent episodes. Also, fun visual effect. The next one's going to be Edible Glitter, who has actually made an appearance tonight in uh, just the slightest amount in our Hibiscus Hollywood 96. And then closing out the category is going to be a smoking cloche. We may have presented this before in our Smoke It Up episode, where we took a variety of bourbons and whiskeys, tequilas and rums, smoked them in various different... Uh, wood chips and then allowed that smoke to proliferate into the drink before taking the cloche off and revealing the smoky mystical I don't remember that. I re I remember that was smoking cool. stuff. <laughs> I remember all of that. We had we had the cloche and then we and then it was here. Um the winner of the category is going to be the Smoking Cloche for 2023's Visual Effects Winner of the Year. Oh, the Smoking Cloche. <laughs> this was actually a big win, big win for the Smoking Cloche. I feel like they have been long overdue. And I forgot to present you the word last time. You did. So accepting on behalf of the Smoking Cloche is going to be me. Yeah, it's going to be him because I forgot last time. Thank you. Oh, my God. This is such an honor. Um, you know... The Cloche and I are very close. Um, we've worked together on a lot of different projects, a lot of different things, and to be able to accept this award on their behalf is honestly a dream come true. Oh, I got it right. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank my mom and my dad um, for you know my my tendencies to drinking, um, and I'd like to thank um, um, the the producers, um, the show, the producers, uh, written by Mel Brooks. Um, I would also love to thank Fire, you know, Combustibility. Without you, none of this would be fo would be possible. Um, thank you so much, and uh, 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 don't buy Monsanto foods. <laughs> Smoking is so funny because, uh, so, when I got that, I got it from Bespoke Post, and it was just like one of the things. I forgot to stop, cancel the order, and they sent effectively a cloche and a piece of wood that is food safe to burn things on. That's the hard part because yeah. you can't just burn things on anything. You have to be very careful. There's additives in the wood. You got to be very safe. Because the wood also has to be dense enough to not burn when you're burning things on it, but also not like so preserved and stuff and like it has to be not so fire safe that it's like covered in lacquers and stuff but it's a it's a good but it's a good wood yeah it's good and i think that this is something that we're gonna actually be bringing back full force doing lots and lots of smoked cocktails i'm really excited for our future of smoked cocktails where we get to experiment with different types of oh that's that's the next category with different types of uh smoking um, substances like we we've done hickory we've done apple wood we've done cherry wood what other woods can we get what into? is one more there was four is maple i think it's maple uh-huh i would love i would love to get some pine needles in there get a real like 
earthy. Also combos. Oh, do a little mix of what we do a mix of combos, and also I think that like you know, oh mesquite, that was oh yeah, other. that's what it is, mesquite. That's and I, mesquite. I think you don't really have to like really even mix it up too much because I think that it's like four different types of woods mm -hmm. plus the liquor. Then the cocktail leads you with almost an infinite amount of mixture. So if you want us I'm, to start smoking cocktails again, you know what you got to do. Let us know. I'm curious if we did like. Like strips of leather, like would that do anything? No. no, no, that would not, and you would not want to be burning that. You can get the leather flavor different ways. Okay, in the Just, leather leather flavors. As an example, because uh, there's like coffee, for, for example. I think oh, it was. What the, if we get like actual peat, like. Like the for realsies peat, like not just peat malt. But they here's the thing: they don't burn the peat. They smoke the peat. No, they burn the peat over. Uh, it's peat burnt but I, over. But I could have sworn the they seeds. they didn't just put it on the fire. They put it in like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not oh. like just on the fire. It's like oh. there's like it's not just touching the fire. Perhaps. Yeah. I thought I thought they were like smolder like they would take like the peat that's been kind of like. Almost, it looks almost like clay bricks. Yeah, yeah, it looks. It's and then like you just kind of slack that onto your embers, and then that smokes and smolders, and then it. So when I've seen it, they've built, they built up, it could, they built, they built it up, mm -hmm. and they they would pack it. So I think that effectively you weren't getting the peat touching the fire, which uh, is the distinction I'm making. Okay, you know what I mean. I see, I see what you mean. Where like you know, if you put peat like, on I'm, top of fire, I'm thinking it's like you have a. Dura flame log essentially made out of peat that you just kind of huck on. Yeah, I think it's more like you know, the flames and the heat are touching the peat, mm -hmm. but it's not just on top of the wood or because it would it would smolder it out and it would, it would snuff it out. That's true. That's true. All right, shall we move on to uh, our next category? <clears throat> are you going to announce what the category is while and then and then I'm going to do it? You ready? You ready? Yes. Our next category is Best Supporting Mixer. Best Supporting Mixer. I feel so... Oh, I was supposed to... I was going to announce you as the... What does the, it matter? The presenter for the next category, James Stephen Berry. <clears throat> the nominees for Best Supporting Mixture. A lemon juice. Orange juice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Pineapple juice or pineapple. Tonic. Oh, a crowd favorite. Seltzer or club soda. I, I, no, no, don't beat me up. He's using them interchangeably. This goes to lemon juice. This goes to lemon juice. Ladies and gentlemen. It's just hands down to lemon juice. It's lemon juice. Now. Accepting the award for lemon juice, unequivocally, is the one, I don't know if you've met him. Come to the stage, Chandler Phillips. The best supporting mixture, lemon juice. You know, it's such an honor to be accepting this on Lemon Juice's behalf. Um, in the past, Lemon Juice and I have not been that tight, but I feel like a lot of that has changed in our previous projects together. Um, Lemon Juice just has this dynamic ability to bring the best out of everyone they work with. Um, Lemon Juice is just a thrill to have on set. They bring an energy that's unparalleled and um, they're a hard worker, you know? It's any anytime when you're when you're in a scene or you're, in, you're stuck in a project and you're like, how do I move forward with this? Lemon Juice shows up and says, you know what? Let me take the reins. And um, it's it's truly been an honor. Thank you so much to the Academy. Lemon Juice is interesting because I would never think of Lemon Juice as like my favorite supporting mixer, right? Like, it, but, but it is. But they're always there. But yeah. like Lemon Juice is, if you're, if you're ever with a cocktail and you're puzzled on like, how do I tie this all together? It's I mean, lemon juice. What's the very well well known famous book? It's salt, sweet, fat, and acid. I did it backwards. It's salt, acid, fat, heat. At the end of the day, 
lemon juice mm. brings a level of acidity that's not often found in a lot of cocktails. You throw in juice in there, some of these mixers, even the bitter ones, Aperol, Campari, mm -hmm. even some of the fruitier dried ones like Creme de Cassis or um, Chambard or Chambord, uh, even with liqueurs, none of them have a acidic nature. It is interesting to me that lemon juice beat out orange juice for this ward uh, because orange juice... You know, is is has carried a lot of uh, drinks on their own. You know, the the screwdriver, a tequila sunrise. But you don't just put orange juice in anything. But you don't just put orange juice. In. Even even for their role in mimosa, lemon juice is honestly just as good, if not a better substitute in some cases, because it brings a tartness and a sweetness. Well, remember, it's supporting mixer, right? Imagine this: a mimosa with. Prosecco, orange juice, and a splash of lemon juice. Just a splash of lemon. The, the, it's, it's it just ties it all together. It's good. It's delicious. I, I honestly, I like it a lot. This is a big win for lemon juice, and uh, one of many. You I didn't. Believe. You didn't expect that. See, no, you thought it was gonna be orange juice or some shit. I, I truly, I thought it was gonna be pineapple. Okay, so there's a reason. Pi pineapple's been having having a heyday. I'm a big fan of pineapple. You know that. But, this, but here's the thing. Pineapple is orange juice and lemon juice, effectively. Yeah. It's a tart, acidic. It's a juice that bites back. I think lemon juice does the supporting nature just a little bit better. Lemon juice has been has been uh, in the game for a while. And I feel like they do get the respect that they deserve. However, now they have the actual award. They have the accolades. They got the accolades. We gave lemon juice the accolades. <clears throat> so for our next category for our next category most, we have what is it it is most oh sorry now presenting most <coughs> now presenting most versatile slash dynamic spirit the indomitable Chandler Phillips they say spirit is what drives a cocktail. And the following nominees are usable in just about any sort of facet to just give a little bit of their own appeal without upstaging a cocktail. This category recognizes the uh, tenaciousness of these spirits to be able to fit in just about anywhere and to be always accessible and on hand. Our nominees are Potato Vodka for their work in Tito's, Irish Whiskey for their work as Jameson, London Dry Gin for their work in Seagram's, and Bombay and Beefeater, and a variety of other roles. <laughs> Empress is not a London dry gin. Oh, no, you're right. I'm sorry. You I'm sorry. How dare you? That's not a London dry gin because it has like fruit in it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're pulling a La La Land right now. I am. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is this is the biggest night of our lives. <laughs> and you want to pull that bush this, leech? This is the biggest night. Are you serious? And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and rounding out the category, Blanco Tequila for their work in... Espelone and Jose Cuervo Silver. The winner of the most versatile spirit award is gonna go to London Dry Gin. Of course. We would not be sitting here tonight if it weren't for London Dry Gin and accepting the award on London Dry Gin's behalf is gonna be James Berry. Well, if you've not been here, then you wouldn't know that like I'm pretty much obsessed with gin especially it's interesting because you would think that perhaps i wouldn't love london dry gin but i do but he does it's nice it's piney it's delicious it fits inside of and with most cocktails take a cocktail and substitute it for london dry thing i think you do have a a complex and interesting experience. You want a martini? 
Have a London dry martini. I honestly have been just waiting for this for so long. <laughs> On behalf of all the brands that create a London dry gin, including Blue Coat. That is done in a London dry style. It's in a style. It's American dry gin, but it's the same style. Leave me alone, okay? That's like, whatever. I know it's I'm splitting hairs, but you're literally I, you're splitting I hairs. did specifically write London oh dry gin. I should have just written dry gin. Because um, to like specify uh, the against, American like, dry gin is a London dry gin. It's been made in America. Okay. And with alone. a little bit more to do. Beef Eater is actually the gin that kind of got me into gin. And Bombay Sapphire. That was that was where it started. That's really where it started. The so gin I, that started it all. You know, long before when I first got a discount. This like times were really different. I got like a a seventy five percent off of a seventy five percent off of a hundred dollar like uh, mm. uh, the food. What is it called? The Fresh Direct. Oh, this is like two thousand and like twelve. So I ordered a bottle of Bulldog and a bottle of Beef Eater, and I found like some cocktail. And all it was was orange juice, and like. Beef eater and I think a little lemon juice or something. You were sipping on gin and juice. It was fucking delicious. I am. Oh God. Is this clean? Yeah. I washed it recently, actually. There's a little bit of gin in here. There's just a little bit. Wow, you're going full Stanley Cup on him. You're drinking. The... Wow. Oh, wow. Gin, baby. He's a gin boy. Wow. I like Seagram's. <laughs> Seagram's is a great gin. <clears throat> now presenting. Oh wait, it's, not, it's my turn, right? Yeah, I just uh, I just did them. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. You're getting ahead of ourselves, really. Now presenting, the award for best supporting cordial is going to be James Beery. Before you get into the nominees, what is a cordial, and what was what's a supporting cordial? This guy messing up my life. Oh, am I stepping on your life? I just want to know. <clears throat> I wanted to bring somebody special on stage to uh, to help me with this nomination. Best Supporting Cordial is a category as we come towards the top two categories of the show that I think sometimes is underrepresented and under-respected. You know, free cordials. Um, I invite to come on stage with me, Chandler Phillips. Thank you so much for having me. This is a magical evening for everyone involved. Um, this category celebrates the uh, lesser known liqueurs, um, you know, flavored spirits, things that aren't uh, the, the right out the still kind of spirit, but instead uh, have a variety of herbs, sweeteners, spices, etc., in order to curate a very particular flavor to complement the rest of the cocktail in which they are in. Because it's pretty cordial. Because it's pretty cordial. And the nominees are. <clears throat> and the nominees are. Campari. Absinthe, Aperol, Triple Sec, Creme de Cassis, Sambuca, and the winner being Creme de Cassis. Wow, 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 wow. Accepting the award for Comdicacies, this massive award, it's two awards, is going to be one, Chandler Phillips. It's just, you work so hard and, and you get only but so far. And you want to think that in the end, it doesn't even matter, but it does. It does matter. Creme de Cassis and I have not known each other long, but the relationship that we have built in just these few short weeks has been one that will last lifetimes beyond ourselves and our generation. 
creme de cassis and I, we're just so honored the, to get this recognition. We've been around. We've been in the in the community, the industry. We've been we've been grinding along, and it just took the perfect synthesis. You know, it's one of those amazing shot in the dark. You know, the planets aligned, and when we put creme de cassis in a wine spritzer, it it changed not only my life. But the trajectory of this industry to come. And for that, I want to thank not only the Academy, but also Black Currents for being just a little different, you know? They're not raspberries. They're not blackberries. They're not even blueberries. They don't get the recognition they deserve. And you definitely won't find them in your average grocery aisle. And and with that, gold currents, step your shit up, you know, be better. Um, because if you do, then good things can happen. And um, thank you. Thank you deepest, deeply, in the deepest purple creme de cassis of my heart. This, is, uh, this has been a long time coming. And uh, suck it, creme de cacao. It's so funny because Crimic Cassis is definitely something that's much newer to us. But I found that it's interesting because I didn't, I don't know, something about it made me think I wasn't going to like it. But it's nice, it's jammy, it's a little sweet, it's complex, it's earthy. It's so much more, it has a more rounded out flavor than I think. Because we also had the black raspberry and blackberry liqueur uh, Chambord. We've also tried Mr. Boston's um, black blackberry liqueur and... Granted, things in a plastic uh, yeah, that don't count. Uh, pint. <laughs> that Chambord, though, is pretty good. The Chambord, fantastic. But, but let's be real. We haven't even had good creme de cassis. We've had, we've had the available creme de cassis. And it's, like you said, it's herbal, but it's also fruity. And it's just such a well-rounded flavor that um, I'm really eager to see the future, where, where we're going to go with this. Um, we need to kind of hammer out these next couple of... Uh, well, oh, actually, we're gonna take a quick intermission from our um, from our uh, awards to do our in memoriam. Um, <coughs> this is gonna be uh, oh, cocktail trends so and and drinking uh, trends from the oh, past year so that we think are either on their way out or like have been long dead. I don't like these anymore. Um, in our in memoriam, as we previously stated in this show, sh- champagne flutes, they're they're out. Champagne, they're here right now. This is probably gonna be. <sighs> it's hard. You can't make a fucking cocktail on them. All you can do is pour bubbly into them and, and drink it, it fast. And it looks kind of neat for yeah. for about fifteen seconds. Um, next on the in memoriam, jungle juice. When's the last time you had jungle juice? That was actually good. Recently. I think really? you're just white. <gasps> I just don't get invited places, apparently. Shot glasses. This isn't an in memoriam for shots. This is just in memoriam for all the shot glasses we have lost. <laughs> to get it's to been this a lot. It's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of shot glasses. There have been so many pairs, triplets of shot glasses that are now down to just single glasses. I left Starbucks with four six packs of, of of shot glasses and now there's only i think one or two of those left it's mm-hmm. the one with the line on it oh the the measuring one yeah yeah this is an r.i.p for all the shot glasses up until now pour some out for my homies um things that also just haven't been around for a while mudslides <laughs> yeah. like who has a mudslide like I'm sorry, not hating, but like if you like a mudslide, by all means, make yourself a mudslide. It's just like, why? If you drink a mudslide, then you suck. If you drink, and you're a, a bad person. If you drink a mudslide, just go get a Wendy's frosty and put bourbon in it. What are you doing? Ugh, concur. Um, we also have egg white foam fizzes. Even in places that aren't vegan. The egg white fizz has gone away. 
eggs are expensive. The egg whites are expensive. It, Too many people economy? have like allergies or just dietarily avoidant of them. And you can easily replicate the foaming with all, even in all these bars, they use like they eat vegan aqu- foam. Aquafaba or the actual like foamer replacement, which is pretty neat. Listen, the egg don't taste like nothing. All of this is foaming. You don't need the egg. I'm sorry. You don't. And then rounding out our in memoriam is going to be clarified cocktails. I don't think they're dead yet. But <laughs> they're I on th- their way. But they are on their way. They have been so overdone. And just every everyone wants to do their own clarified cocktail. I think that their trend, their hype is on their way out. And so with that, I say... R.I.P. Clarified Cocktails. Maybe we should do one before they're completely dead, or do we wait until the trend is over, and then we kind of try to resuscitate it? Maybe if you keep watching, you'll find out. Now, presenting for the best leading spirit in a drink, Chandler Phillips. This category celebrates our essential spirits, that we have found in drinks this past year to have really shined through in a way that has made our hearts and our tummies and our brains tangle in a way that we haven't felt since that one time in fifth grade. You know the time. Starting out our category of best leading spirit in a drink, bourbon in the Kentucky Mule. We have gin in a Corpse Reviver. Mezcal in A Mezcal Manhattan. And Yeho Rum in The Caribbean Old Fashioned. And last but not least, Tequila in The Jalisco Sunrise. And the winner of Best Leading Spirit in a Drink is going to go to... And Yeho Rum! In a Caribbean old fashioned. And Yeho Rum! This is a big win for Yeho Rum, and accepting the award on their behalf is going to be James Berry. And Yeho Rum, wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's so interesting because, as I've spoken about many times, me and the Blanco or the White Rum, we don't always get along the best. But in Yeho, the Aged Rum. Is it named after that restaurant on 40, 53rd Street named Inejo? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my, I didn't know it was named after that. <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> were, there were no <laughs> aged rums before that restaurant opened. Uh, so Inejo is specifically aged, was it over five years? Because I think rum is aged, it's like younger, right? So it's like, what is it? It's like zero to... I actually don't know what the delineation in ages God, is. Fuck. Because rum can have like just any given number on it. And it can mean either the months. It can mean the years. It can mean... There's... Because rum is so prolific across different countries, different states. And there's no like concise delineation of what an Añejo rum is. Other than it is a dark rum. That is not a flavored rum that has been aged for at least one year because of the root word año for añejo. God. Rum and the aging is silly. I, I never know. I never quite understand, but quite because I'm not the biggest rum person. That's really more of a Chandler. But when it comes to rum, it's always for me añejo. I think that the body, the complexity, the, the I think it's so fun. I think it has a little bit of sweetness on the back. I think that it works in replacements in popular cocktails like old fashions or even in things like a a modified mule. What I've been really enjoying this past year, which is why we decided to go with Añejo rum as the winner, is because there is a specific uh, pinnacle rum or even a Zacapa 23, just a very good quality aged rum. That or a, a diplomatico, um, it, when you do that with uh, with a little bit of simple syrup, 
and a little bit of either Angostura bitters or I really like, uh, I believe it's Bitterman's has a Tiki bitters. Oh, right? yeah. Or a Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like island bitters. Yeah, they have a Caribbean one and two. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That is fantastic to uh, to add to complement that in Yeho Rum. And just their work in that project has been exceptional. Honestly, the highlight of my 2023 drinking career. And wow. so that's that's why that's why they beat out every other category. Because Mezcal was a top contender. It is, but I think that when it comes okay, here's the thing. Everybody always goes whiskey, 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 whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. And I do still like and enjoy and love some whiskey, but I think there's a lot of complexities to be found in other things. AKA yeah. the mess you look at the category, right? You see mm-hmm. the things that are similar to some of the you, you gotta have amazing mezcals, right? Different sweet, really smoky, can be very complex. A lot of variability. I the reason why I'm never really pushing for rum is because I tend to only like uh, more expensive rums in, in Yeho rums I because it. I think it's something to do with the aging. Um, you can taste uh, some interesting characteristics of the barrel. Of, of well, cause a young rum can be real sharp. It definitely can. It can be really bright. It can really just hit your palate, hit that, that kind of tannic thing mm-hmm. on, on the side of your palate there. So, you know, when it comes down to it, I think I, Wonder what's going to happen next year. I hope Jin makes a comeback. I think it's hard for Jin. It's I'm been, a big Jin fan, but I think it's hard for Jin. It has been tough out there for Jin lately. Because Jin is good in cocktails. But if you think about what the best supporting liquor inside of one is, spirit. Spirit. Yeah. I, I, I think, unfortunately. Age rum had its heyday. I think it's had going it. to be a three-run race, a three run race always mm. between... Uh, whiskey, mezcal, and an H rum. I th- I think they're just Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I say whiskey because that's all, many things. It's Scotch. It's Irish whiskey. You know what I mean? The variety, it's so versatile. Yeah. Um, I think that gin with its it's spiced, yes, but I, you know, this is definitely always going to be my personal runner up. It's just it's no matter how much things you how many things you throw into it, right? It's lacking a bit of complexity because the complexity in a whiskey, the complexity in a rum or in a mezcal comes from uh, either, you know, uh, the, the the barreling process, the it's smoking the process, the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas, unfortunately, gin is just being amplified by the things that are being put into it. It's true. <sighs> But without further ado, because we do, we are running a little behind, but it wouldn't be an awards show if we weren't running behind. Would you please, James Beery, please announce the final category nominees for the final category of this year's Tasties. God, this is hard. Oh, there's a lot. This is difficult. There's so, I- The nominees are. The sake martini. Wait, wait, what's what's the what's the category? Oh, sorry. You're supposed to announce the category. No, you announce the category. You you kind of it's it's a you got to tell them tell them what you told them tell them what you're gonna tell them kind of thing. <laughs> the nominees for. Okay, hold on, hold on. I messed it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Announce me again. Announce me again. Announcing the nominees for best cocktail of 2023 is James Beery. This is the uh, the biggest cocktail of the year. The best cocktail of 2023. And the nominations go to the Sake Martini. Oh, that was one of my favorites. Espresso Martini. That one was popular amongst the populace. Kentucky Mule. Another one of my favorites. Might be a little late to the game. Penicillin. <gasps> Oh, that one was really good. Painkiller. Oh, that one was another really good one. Spicy Moon. Oh, that was one I have not tried, but you highly recommended. And pulling up at the end, the Aperol Spritz. Oh, God, they had a they had a death grip on and last spring. The winner is... Aperol Spritz! There's no fucking way that the Aperol Spritz wasn't fucking winning. 
Now presenting, receiving all three awards, and some simple syrup, and some pomegranate juice, oh, oh. and what's left of some gin. Oh God! It's and with a hefty pour of kava. Make sure there's some here for me. You know, guys, this is this is why we do it. This is why we go to the brunches at 9 a.m. This is why. This is why we get up in the morning. This is, this is the biggest honor. Um, Aperol, you know, our our Aperol bottle in the bar has been through so much this past year. They have, uh, they've been everywhere. They've been working in every capacity. We started with your basic Aperol spritz, you know, Aperol Prosecco, and then we moved on and said, okay, what if we do an Aperol spritz in beer? What if we do an Aperol spritz with white wine and a sprink or and a sparkling type deal? What what if we just throw Aperol in and spritz it with with anything? And Aperol spritz has been just so prolific and so amazing that it would honestly it would be a snub if it went to anyone other than Aperol Spritz. You know, penicillin, you had a great run. Painkillers, oh my God, you were the drink of the summer. But ultimately, Aperol Spritz, you just, you pulled it out and you have been not only a timeless classic, but a, a one that will proliferate into the future. And I'm actually looking forward to Aperol Spritz season in the next in the coming spring because we're gonna see Aperol spritzes everywhere and I think right now we need to figure out how we're going to change how we're gonna how we're not gonna fix but how we're gonna find a new fun rendition to bring Aperol spritz into the 2024 year and this is this is the, this is the thing this is the problem right you so see you look here you see at the sake martini I think personally pulling up the rear I don't hate the sake martini. I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think in a good second place actually is an espresso martini. The espresso martini, while not one that I personally enjoy, is extremely popular. And I think it would absolutely be unfair to discount it and not mention it as the absolute runner up. Mm -hmm. Because while I'm not a big fan of it, it was, it's been really popular for the last four years. Yeah. And it's, it's been it's been a front runner for a wow. while. I wonder if it should be it should have been in the memoriam because I think it might be towards the end because I'm seeing it less. I'm when, seeing it less, but I haven't seen it dead yet. I agree. Uh, the Kentucky Mule always fun. Walk him through it real quick because I feel like Denny's a little love. Kentucky Mule, a classic Moscow Mule, but substituting bourbon instead of vodka gives you that kind of mint julepy vibe. It gives you. Isn't it just a highball though? Essentially, <laughs> it's got a little lemon, a little bit of mint, and it's got a lot of ice. It's good. Wow, wow! And now presenting. Oh, I already gave you the. I already gave you all three. You gave me. You gave me all of the awards. That's wow. That's going to conclude our first ever Tasties Awards. Wow, I can't believe it. This has been absolutely amazing can i just say that i have envisioned something like the tasties for many years i am proud to be here i'm proud to be here with chandler i think that this is really truly the epitome of cocktail award shows not that i know any other ones this is the pinnacle of class sophistication and really there's no there's no night that's more star-studded than this. And I look forward to uh, to our next year. Um, is there anything that you're hoping to see maybe pop off in the next year that we can include in the second annual um, Tasties Awards? What I would like to see really is a bucking of trends here. Because if you go back through the nominees, what you will see is a lot of really stable representation from 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 the types of spirits and cordials as well as cocktails i mean aperol winning the first year is a big thing but i would like to see a bucking of the trend i would love to see something different i don't want to see an old-fashioned next year i want to see a cocktail with a name so long and intricate that we have to explain it to the audience because they've never heard of it i like that I like that a lot, and I'm really looking forward to it. I want to see um, a, a, a more 
competitive uh, supporting cordial uh, category. Oh, yes. And I think the one that we had this year was pretty competitive. Um, it was a full list. Wasn't that the most competitive category, I think? It, With the creme de cassis? There was a lot. There was a lot going on, on in it. But I feel like it just wasn't as competitive. Concur. As it could be. Which is why I think the most interesting cordial to happen to win. Right? You know. Yeah. Wow. Um, this has been a night to remember. This has been the Tasties. I've been your uh, your orchestra leader, your uh, your announcer, James Beery. And, and I've been your MC for the evening, Chandler Phillips. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant tomorrow. Remember, drinking is not required, but it is recommended. I got a little too excited there, I think. I'm really excited for next year. I think we're going to have a really good, crazy. Oh, yeah, it's going to be hot. It's going to be real.